Preston's reverence for those who have served our nation reminds us of why we salute our flag, why we put our hands on our hearts for the Pledge of Allegiance, and why we proudly stand for the national anthem. For decades, open borders have allowed drugs and gangs to pour into our most vulnerable communities. The third pillar ends the visa lottery, a program that randomly hands out green cards without any regard for skill, merit, or the safety of American people. In recent weeks, two terrorist attacks in New York were made possible by the visa lottery and chain migration. I just signed, prior to walking in, an order directing Secretary Mattis to re-examine our military detention policy and to keep open the detention facilities in Guantanamo Bay. My duty and the sacred duty of every elected official in this chamber is to defend Americans because Americans are dreamers too. Everybody's a dreamer. Yep. Welcome back to Bell Shane Rule live in Washington, D.C. That, of course, was President Trump taking plenty of opportunities in his first State of the Union address to tell his base just what they wanted to hear. But is everything he said true? Our panel's here to break it down uh, with us. We got Rick Tyler, uh, co-founder of Foundry, Foundry Strategies and an MSNBC political analyst. Eugene Scott, political reporter for The Washington Post and Vivian Salama, national political reporter for NBC News. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Rick, let me start with you. The, the immigration issue is close to my heart as an immigrant. Um, I want to ask you about the visa lottery, what President Trump calls the visa lottery, but I do need to correct what he said. It's, uh, you know, we know it as the diversity uh, lottery program. These visas only go to individuals with either a high school degree or work experience and skilled jobs. I, I just got to bust this myth. Nobody gets into this country not highly vetted unless you come in absolutely illegally. You can't come in through a visa program in America. Uh, like any visa program, you've got to actually be vetted. So Maybe people are doubting it because you're here. Part of the, yeah, I might be the, the, the problem here, Rick, is that the United States, like every other developed nation, has a uh, low replacement rate. We don't, we don't, not enough people are born. You have to get immigrations in, immigrants in. At some point, Republicans know this as well as Democrats do. Why does the president continue to harp on this anti-immigrant message? The visa lottery is actually not the problem. No, it isn't a problem, and I think the president does it for political reasons. And um, look, if, if the president means by a merit-based system, we often talk about merit-based system, right. like PhDs or something like that, or technical. That's not always true. I mean, merit is based on skills that we, we actually need, the jobs we actually you need. You might need construction workers. We do. You might we need, need agricultural yes. workers. Yes. Right. In fact, people can make a very good living in the trades right now, from HVAC to plumbing to electrical. Right. Electrical. Call them health care workers? Correct. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, and because there's a lot of, there's, there's not enough people replacing those, those types of jobs. So we should look at that. And if the president is ever going to get to like four or five, and remember he always says six percent growth, right. we, we better right. that bring is a, some more immigrants in. This is a great point to, to point this. out because uh, uh, GDP growth uh, in the economy is output and labor. And if you don't have enough labor, you don't get that. So Stephen Miller needs to be reminded that if you want to cut legal immigration in half, you're not going to get to your four, five, or six. And if you want to growth. talk about GDP and us being the greatest country in the world, which I do believe we are, our numbers are just below Canada and Mexico. Uh, I want to talk, or I want to at least fact check this claim that the president makes that immigrants can bring in unlimited distant relatives. That's just not true. No, that's false. Um, so <laughs> essentially what the program currently states is that you can sponsor relatives as long as they're immediate relatives, a spouse, a child, a parent. But distant relatives like cousins, for example, you cannot sponsor them under the current program. And in fact, the, the way the visa system works right now is that there's actually a cap on the number of people that you can sponsor so that you don't have this sort of chain migration that the president mentioned during his speech. And if you remember, he did mention it during his speech in this context. Context and it elicited some boots. You know, it, it, it's literally true, it, but it is practically true. And look, I support the current policy. I don't support the, the, yes. the policy, mm -hmm. but if you bring a parent in and they can bring a sibling in, then you will get into unlimited 
migration. Sure. But so I think it's practically true. It's not literally true. But when you say that the president is doing this for political reasons, what's the political motivation? Because there are 1.8 million dreamers whose status is in question. And most and, of them are Hispanic. And but, the Republican Party has not courted Hispanics and has not. Well, I, I believe that the Republican Party could be a natural home for Hispanics, right? But. The Republican Party does a terrible job at courting Hispanics, and so the, so if you get uh, a certain number of Hispanics so uh, to vote for a particular candidate, and you get that population, so that's that's the Democratic Party investing in the future. The Republican Party has not done that. Uh, so Eugene, where does this go with respect to the Dreamers? Because I see on the horizon another possible continuing resolution in Congress. I see another uh, possible shutdown, and I don't see I don't really see resolution to this issue of the Dreamers. There was nothing presented last night that would give Dreamers confidence that the president was willing to put forward a bill of love, which he proposed earlier right. this month. There was great concern because he doubled down on rhetoric that we saw him put forward the day he announced his uh, presidential campaign. I think a lot of times people forget uh, that President Trump had it take, took the hard line on immigration the day that he called Mexican immigrants murderers and right. rapists. And last night he talked about MS-13 and gang. Right. But and and conflated, conflated yeah. immigrants to gang uh, members when the reality as we just discussed, is that many immigrants come over here with jobs and work experience. But is it a savvy politi ar political argument? Because during those three days of shutdown, Republicans very quickly put out that ad that said Democrats care more about illegal immigrants than they do about sick children. And then we saw a compromise made. Are Democrats overplaying their hand, making dreamers their core issue that they don't want to budge on? We saw them booing last night, and I completely understand. But there are a lot of issues on the table. Well, there's definitely, you have to remember the political, the politics at stake, because in most of the dreamers currently live in Democratic you know, districts. And so for them, obviously, especially we're in a midterm election year, this is something that is very important to them. It's important to their constituents. But broadly, they promised voters that this was going to be something that they fought for. And this is what they're trying to do. Unfortunately, what you have, and Eugene just touched upon it, is that the president is trying to equate this issue with crime statistics and just right. the vulnerability of our society right now. And unfortunately, that's also also not quite true, especially when you put it into context, the president didn't even bring up gun violence yesterday, and we've seen it now how many sh okay. shootings in schools in the last couple well, of weeks alone. Las Vegas oh, yeah. in the beginning. He mentioned Las Vegas. I was going he to say mentioned Las Vegas, lines. but we're talking about the school shootings, yeah. for example. Right, in Kentucky that he was slow to, to move yeah. forward on and comment on. I was going to say also that it's not the Democrats that are making dreamers their core issue. I think that's Republican phrasing of their argument. If we remember, there were Democratic lawmakers who said during the shutdown they wanted to bring attention to the opioid epidemic funding for uh, defense they also wanted to have disaster relief for P puerto rico and hurricane uh problems obviously and i think what happens is that there's they've had a difficult time in communicating to people on the other side of the aisle that this is more than about dreamers for them all right. Uh, it is kind of interesting because the president did continue to imply that immigration programs make the country less safe, uh, citing re a recent terror attempt in New York, and he linked that to the visa. Uh, interesting, Duke University's Triangle Center on Terrorism and Homeland Security uh, put out an interesting statistic. The chances of an American being killed by a Muslim extremist, one in 19 million. The chances of an American ki being killed by an extremist for being a Muslim is one in three million. Okay, those are facts, but it also... Uh, it, 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 it remains to, it is true that the president does a phenomenal job at getting people angry and getting people, people fearful, and that helps him in terms of popularity. I don't know if it's helping him, yeah. though, with oh. people outside of his base. It keeps people on the Trump train on board. But if you want to win the midterms, if you want to win 2020, State of the Union speeches are used to bring more people into the team. I don't know that he cares. President Trump loves who loves him, and that's his base. Rick, what's, the, well, what's your final thought on this? It's, uh, I think it's tragic that, that immigration, the people who are actually affected by immigration policy get stuck because Democrats have, have failed on immigra immigration too. Barack Obama had the Democrat majority. They could have moved on immigration. They didn't. And so they get stuck in the middle of this. And, and this is, sadly, this is so solvable.